Welcome everyone. In today's video, we will be diving into an overview of the hardware and software hierarchies of the NVIDIA GPUs and also we are going to introduce CUDA. So let's start with the CUDA introduction. CUDA, which is known as Compute Unified Device Architecture, is a parallel computing platform and application programming interface created by NVIDIA. CUDA allows software developers to use NVIDIA's graphic processing units for general purpose processing. And this is an approach known as GPGPU, General Purpose Computing on Graphics Processing Units. There are three crucial points that I want to mention at the beginning of this section. First, CUDA is based on the C programming language. And this is an advantage as it allows developers familiar with uh, C to easily write software that can execute on NVIDIA's GPUs. The second key point here is the compiler. The CUDA compiler is named NVCC. This is not just any compiler. It is the heart of the CUDA toolkit. The NVCC does more than simply convert CUDA code into executable file or the machine code. It plays multiple vital roles in the development process. As we progress through this course, we will uncover the versatility of the NVCC commands and how it optimizes our CUDA applications. And this is to ensure we are fully utilizing the GPU's resources. The third point that we need to discuss here is the distinction between the host and the device terminologies. Typically, host denotes the CPU and its associated global memory, or the RAM, while on the other side, the device refers to the GPU and its global memory. This differentiation is crucial, not just in, in terminology, but in how we craft our software. It influences code structure, data transfer, and memory handling. So, the left part here in this picture represents the host, while the right part represents the device or the GPU. Now, let's revise and discuss in depth the relationship between the hardware architecture levels of the GPU and its software parts. As previously discussed, the structure of a GPU is hierarchical. It has four distinct levels of hardware organization. The topmost level is the GPU itself. The GPU itself encapsulates all units. Within this GPU, within the entire GPU, there are numerous streaming multiprocessors or SMs. Each SM representing the second level of this hierarchy. This design was detailed in the Volta white paper video. So please watch the Volta white paper video because it is very important. Then each streaming multiprocessor is further divided into several partitions, marking the third level of the hardware structure. In our example, I mean in Volta and Ampere architectures, each SM or each streaming multiprocessor has four such partitions. As you can see in this picture, which is brought from the Volta's white paper, the SM is divided into four partitions. By checking the Ampere white paper also, you can observe the same as shown here. At the fourth level and most granular level, we find individual computational units within each partition. An example of such a unit is the floating point core, the FP32 core, which is responsible for executing the floating point operations. These cores are the fundamental units for processing the computations within the GPU. So, I need to summarize all of this. To summarize, the GPU's hardware architecture can be viewed as a four-level hierarchy, starting from the entire GPU, then descending through the streaming multiprocessors to their internal partitions as a third level, and finally reaching the individual computational cores. These different levels of hardware in a GPU 
require in return a similar structure in the corresponding software applications. And this is very important. For example, let's consider that we have a CUDA application represented by this box as shown. We have a CUDA application and we put this application in a box. This application is meant to run on the entire GPU. But the question here is, how are the different segments of this code will be allocated or assigned across the different hardware levels? Okay, that is what we need to understand. The mapping between the different segments of the code of the software into the different levels of the hardware. That's why the first step in writing a CUDA code is to divide the GPU kernels from this application into smaller software segments called blocks or thread blocks. So in all CUDA applications, the first step is to start by configuring the number of blocks for each CUDA kernel. Considering this whole box as a CUDA application, then we can apply this principle. We can divide it into smaller blocks as shown. Each one of these boxes, of these small boxes, is considered or called a block or a thread block. The two names are correct, block or a thread block. This segmentation or partitioning in the application mirrors the first two hierarchical levels of the GPU. The entire application is designed to be executed on the entire GPU. The second level in the software involves different blocks being executed on the different SMs. However, this raises a question. Here on the left side, we have tasks represented by these software blocks or the thread blocks. And on the other side, we have SMs which can be considered workers. So on the left, we have tasks or jobs represented by blocks. And on the right side, we have workers represented by the SMs. The question here is, who is responsible to assign these tasks, these software tasks, tasks, these jobs to the workers or the SMs? Who is the manager here? To answer this question, we need to know another unit known as the Giga Thread Unit. Giga Thread Unit is one of the most important units within the GPU. One of its key functions is to efficiently allocate these software blocks or tasks or jobs across the various SMs. Okay, to clarify this concept further, I prefer to open the Volta's white paper. It is very important to, uh, to keep looking into the white paper because it gives you more information. So if we refer to the Volta white paper to examine the position of this unit, of the GigaThread unit, as illustrated in this graph, in this picture, the Giga 3D unit is uh, situated within the overall structure of the entire GPU. It has connections to all streaming multiprocessors or all SMs. And it again, it is responsible for supplying them with the necessary software blocks or software tasks. Applying the same principle to the next level, consider a block that needs to be executed on a streaming multiprocessor. Suppose that the first block here in this, in this image or in this application is assigned for executing on this SM. However, this raises another question. Why? Because we have four partitions in this SM, but we have one block here. How should a single software piece called a block be distributed among the four hardware partitions that exist within the SM. If we decided to assign the entire block to just one of these partitions, this would lead to underutilization because we will have three idle partitions and this is a wasting of the available hardware resources. This consideration leads us to the third level of the software hierarchy, the warps. Each software block 
here in this part is subdivided into a smaller units known as warps. For example, if we decide to divide the first block here into four warps, then each warp can be allocated to a different partition within this SM. So four warps and four partitions. In this case, we can assign one warp for each partition. But let's take another example. If we increase the number of warps more, let's say, for example, 32 warps per block, then each partition, we have four partitions, right? And 32 warps. Then each partition will execute eight warps. If you have more tasks for each hardware unit, eight warps for one partition, then you need uh, um, a manager. You need a small manager here. That's why we have a unit called a warp scheduler. In each partition, we have a warp scheduler. Why? Because sometimes we can assign many warps for one partition. So we need an organization, we need an organizer here or a manager here. If I zoom in this picture, we can see the warp scheduler unit within this partition. This unit exists, as we said, in each partition, and it is responsible for assigning one of the eight warps in this example in each cycle. Moving to the fourth level, we see that each partition contains several cores. This is on the hardware side, but on the software side, a warp typically consists of a 32 threads by default. Thus, each thread within a warp is going to be executed on a separate core within the partition. This setup ensures that every core in the partition is actively engaged in the computation process. Understanding the four levels in both hardware and software is crucial for efficiently configuring your CUDA application. As we explore in the upcoming videos, when initiating any CUDA application, two key parameters need to be specified, the number of blocks and the number of threads within each block. Regarding the warps, we can calculate the number of warps in a block by dividing the block size, the uh, number of threads per block, by 32 because the size of uh, the warp is fixed and it is equal to 32 threads. That is all for today. And in the next video, we are going to start our first project.